Good morning everybody and welcome to this service of remembrance the 11th of November 2020 from Newport Pagnell Parish Church. Uh, there is a different reflection this is and service from Remembrance Sunday which you can find on the Newport Parish uh, Newport Pagnell Parish Facebook page and on the church website. You can also follow the link on the Newport Pagnell Chit Chat page to that particular service on Sunday the 8th of November. We're having to record our services once again as we did at the height of the lockdown earlier in the year and this morning we're going to have a well we were going to have a socially distanced live stream service in church attended by the Royal British Legion, our Newport Pagnell Mayor, the Deputy Mayor of Milton Keynes and others of you too who are going to come. But as you know it's had to be cancelled due to the lockdown. But we won't forget this day, so we are doing what we're allowed to do this morning. It's been moving to see the local community's red stones build up on our poppy cascade. And so thank you for all those who have taken the time and effort to contribute to this. Each stone represents one of your prayers. I'm Nick the Rector and formerly an army chaplain and I'm joined today again by one of our licensed preachers, Mervyn Evans, who was once a squadron leader in the RAF. We're going to hear a roll call of the names of local people here who lost their lives during both world wars. We're going to hear the last post, have two minutes silence and then hear the Rivali. Then there'll be a reading, and then I'll share with you a few thoughts about the fallen, and this will be followed by some prayers of thanks for them. The church will continue to be open over the weeks ahead for private prayer, and the poppy display will be here until this midday on Friday. Please feel free to come in, reflect, and take photos. All are welcome but stay socially distanced with your masks. But first, as we ponder and pray, this is a chaplain's prayer used in the armed forces. And after this, the recorded roll call will happen of those who died in both world wars in Newport Pagnell, from Newport Pagnell. Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose loving Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purposes of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Arthur Chapman, Dermot Edwin Gold, George Arthur Hall, Robert Geoffrey Higgins, Ernest William Inwood, Roger Jackson, Edward John Lyme, Robert John Alexander Mills, Cyril Stapleton, The Irish Gods, Patrick Connery, Miles Tyler Gold, The Bessershire and Hertfordshire Regiment, Leonard George Finch, Jack William Matley, The East of Surrey Regiment, Leonard Arthur Gaston, The Royal Army Service Corps, Charles Sidney Lawman, William John Tompkins, Arthur 
Hear these words from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and talk to them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we stand in the north transept of the church, and here in this transept is the special memorial plaque of the many, many names of people who suffered in the first in the Second World War, suffered and died. Everyone, unless you're bonkers, loves peace. Without it, it's difficult to do anything normal in life, jobs, work, schools, hobbies, travel, going out with who you want to be with, marrying who you want, and so on are the things that we take for granted in our nation. But these things become hard when you're living under a dictatorship. Can you imagine having much fun or freedom if Hitler had won the last war? There'd be so many things that we just wouldn't be allowed to do. What we write or read would be censored. You'd have no say of your own in your political or social views. There'd be spies on every street noting what you said and reporting back to the authorities. You'd be put in jail or sent to a concentration camp just for something which a member of your family or a friend had said. If the Third Reich had survived and Hitler had won the war, then we'd also be living in a very racist society indeed. Lots of civilians suffered during that regime just for expressing a view that the state didn't agree with. Millions were sent to their deaths in gas chambers and labour camps because they were considered to be part of the untermenschen, the Nazi word for an inferior race or national group that was inferior. And these things happened within the lifetime of people who are still with us today. They shop in the same shops as us on the high street just outside this church. They live in the streets that you and I live in. It wasn't that long ago. Some of them are our parents or grandparents. And tyranny and injustice still goes on in many parts of the world today and millions suffer because of it. Now, we are fortunate not to suffer today, as many other nations still do. Whether we're Labour, Liberal, Conservative, Brexit, Green Party, and so on, 
we are still allowed to debate and disagree with each other without being arrested en masse or sent for execution. And we have this freedom today because millions fought for it. People from the UK and other countries too. They didn't just love peace and freedom, they were prepared to give their lives for it so that our generation can enjoy the freedom that we have today. Those killed and those who survive will testify that it's easy to love peace, but harder and more painful to make peace by putting your life on the line for others. Any fool can love peace, but helping to make peace and fighting for it can be another very bloody matter. Making peace by standing up to tyranny led to sacrifices the scale of which can hardly be comprehended today. Between 70 and 85 million lost their lives in World War II alone across the globe. And what of the carnage of World War I? 20 million deaths and the further 21 million wounded from all countries involved. And people say, weren't the reasons for that war, World War I, more complicated? Well, historians have all sorts of views about what led to that terrible war in which most of us, somewhere down the line, probably have a relative who died so young in that appalling conflict. Well, maybe there are different theories about what led to World War I. However, those who went to the trenches were still prepared to risk death for what they believed was right. And I don't know about you, but maybe I'm sounding like an old grump, but I wonder whether some today would be so moved as to risk life and limb in a generation that talks more about rights than sacrifice. Today, would we, at the sound of an officer's whistle, go over a trench top into enemy machine gun fire? I don't know. But one thing I do know is that we shouldn't forget the awesome sacrifice that so many made because of their conviction that they were defending a right cause. And we must remember this blood spilt so that we can try to ensure that such heartbreaking conflict doesn't happen again. The philosopher, poet and novelist George Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And it's encouraging to know that so many of you refuse to forget and have visited the church over the last week to pay your respects to the civilians soldiers, air crews, Royal Navy and auxiliary services who endured fear, injury and death so that we can live freely today. Many of you have also brought your children to lay a red stone in our Poppy Cascade River which represents the blood of the fallen and Jesus' blood too. Our national and local Royal British Legion does its best to keep the memory alive throughout the year. And in our refusing to forget the past, we are helping to prepare for a better future and honouring the memory of those who gave us the liberties we all enjoy today. 
and the God bit? Well, sacrifice for others is a reflection of what God did for us. He spilled his blood on the cross as an expression of his love for us. There was a resurrection as a consequence of sacrificial giving for others, giving to the point of physical death. And although the fallen are resurrected now with the Lord, we are left to ponder and remember the lessons that the fallen teach us. Namely the great lesson of giving till it hurts so that others may live. We will remember them. Amen. Let us pray. The response to May God Give Peace is God Give Peace. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered and known to God, may God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, may God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence, the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God, God give, give peace. peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. God, God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. going to close this act of remembrance with a prayer written by St Ignatius of Loyola who was once a soldier himself and he wrote this prayer to help to achieve peace and a sense of service in our hearts. Teach us good Lord to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, 
to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you evermore. Amen.